Hey turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. Video? Video? What did I say? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I spent, this is the most I've ever spent, over a thousand dollars on one of my turtles. And it may not be for the reasons that you think. So yeah, today's gonna be a little bit of a story time. It's gonna be kind of interesting. Um, and I didn't wanna, uh, I guess I won't spoil things, but uh, I haven't been keeping you guys up to date on this just because I didn't know how the outcome would turn. But I have been keeping people on my Patreon updated so if you want to be updated on all things going on behind the scenes and whatnot, things that I don't come out and say on here, live streams, early access stuff, hit the link up over here and head over to my Patreon. Over there, you'll keep up to date on some of the turtles that maybe I don't show too often, like my little spotted turtles here or little Mabel, the red foot tortoise and all kinds of other fun, kind of cool stuff. All right, folks. So sorry if I sound a little bit off, I'm just getting over a cold and it is just a cold. I got that freaking whole test thing. Let's sit down and have ourselves a little story time deal. Okay. I'm literally, I'm in my pajamas. I'm in my, my PJs, my fire truck PJs. Yeah, there was no video Friday because ill. Okay. So in case you guys don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it's like two months ago now, maybe even a little bit longer, I got this little uh, concentric diamondback terrapin named Yoda. She was freaking awesome. So she's super cool, super nice looking animal. I think it was like two or three months ago at this point that I got her. I have the unboxing video of her right over here, I wanna say. And it was awesome. I got her around the same time that I got a sub-adult female ornate diamondback terrapin with a bunch of flower backs. So two really nice animals super excited about. I got them around the same time, so I put them in the same quarantine tub. I had them right over here on my porch, just in like a 110 gallon stock tank with a filter hooked up to it just to monitor them and make sure that they can't give anything to my terrapins in the pond. I didn't want them, you know, giving everyone in the pond maybe tapeworms or a parasite or some type of bacteria or infection. Wanted to make sure that they were healthy. Right, so like three weeks, three or four weeks of quarantine, everything seemed okay. I just do everything I can, like I said, to mitigate risk for three weeks. All of her waist looked good. Everything looked okay. Both of them were eating, basking, doing super well. So then I made that video of, of me I, introducing Yoda into the pond. I didn't want her to give them any bacteria, infection, anything like that. I never considered the chance that they could give something to her. I suppose I didn't consider it because all of my terrapins are doing fine. All of them in the pond are eating active, healthy, totally good at this point. So what was there for me to worry about? I put Yoda in, I see her basking. I see like this little crappy blurry image, but I saw that was her, that was her basking. And I checked my camera and saw her basking for a couple days. Four days after I put her in the pond, I noticed she's coming up to eat and she's just kind of slow, getting pushed around by the koi, getting pushed by the other turtles. And she's like falling over over in the water and then like slowly writing herself, like really lethargic and weird. I'm like, okay, that's that's not normal. So I scoop her up with a net and put her back in that 110 gallon stock tank because I, I hadn't torn it down at that point. Note during this time, I had already put in the ornate female and she's, you know, was doing fine and has been fine since then. Now she's in brumation somewhere in the pond, but she's totally fine, totally good. So I pull Yoda out and of course, after a little bit, I notice her like this underwater going, which is sneezing. She's basically sneezing underwater. Uh, and so that is indicative of a respiratory infection, some type of internal bacteria, some type of infection, something wrong, basically. So I say, okay, time for antibiotics. Uh, I, I have the most basic antibiotic. It's called Batril. It's a little bit harsh. It has a really high pH, I wanna say, so it'll burn the tissue and the muscle a little bit. Definitely not ideal, but it's the first line of defense. It's really cheap. It's readily available. I already had a bunch of it left. I went to the vet anyway, just to get some fresh syringes, just because, I don't know, no, I didn't want to use old ones. So I went to the vet, you know, 100 and, like 130 bucks or something like that to go get a checkup and get new uh, new syringes and new Batril. When I go to the vet, usually I know what I need and I don't need them to tell me. I'm like, just hit me up with Batril. Hi there, is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. And then I asked if they had ceftazidime. She said, no, we don't, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So Batril, round one, first antibiotic, my first try, like the first uh, first round, whatever. This is what a lot of people use for a first baseline defense against some type of bacteria, respiratory infection. Urkel had it last year or like a year and a half ago or something like that. When he was coming out of brumation the first year or the first time, and I used it within a week, 
totally back to normal. So I get my my Batril. I'm giving her injections right in like the armpit kind of. If she's facing, if I am a turtle and I'm facing you and her arms are here, it's like in between the neck and the arm, closer to the arm in the little fat fold. You know, punch it just into the surface of the skin, not too far. Throw it in, like, you know, inject the syringe and pull it out and put a little diluted betadine just to sanitize the little wound. I do that every day for two weeks, no difference. She's actually just slowly getting worse, stopped eating. Um, and at this point I have her in this purple tub, uh, this purple like just container with a 160 watt heat lamp over it and just towels. And I'm soaking her every day in water, keeping her dry docked. I wanna keep her lungs nice and clear. I don't want her head underwater, keeping her totally dry with just some towels to hide in, but a heat lamp over it to keep it nice and warm, soaking her once or twice a day for 30 minutes or so. I hear her scratching sometimes at the bottom of this tub, trying to get out because of course she's not happy about it. And slowly the scratching sort of slows down and that worries me. So I call my vet, I'm like, hey, the one that's close to me about close 45 minutes up north, I say, hey, uh, do you guys have ceftazidime? So if Batril doesn't work, usually you use ceftaz. Now ceftaz is much safer, it's much, much much kinder to the turtle. It doesn't burn the skin. It needs to be kept frozen in order to stay fresh. You have to actually thaw it out before using it. It's kind of cool. Ceftaz is, you know, if Batril doesn't work, you do Ceftaz. If Ceftaz doesn't work, you do Batril. So I'm like, hey, y'all got Ceftaz or what? And she said, no, we don't. Try whatever, gave me a small list. So I'm calling, uh, you know, I'm calling an hour from me, nothing. 45 minutes in the opposite direction of them, nothing. Nobody has Ceftaz. They don't have Ceftaz. Nobody has it. I drive all the way up to my vet to write me a prescription for it. Hopefully some other vet will accept the prescription. And so I drive 45 minutes up, get it, 45 minutes back. I finally find a vet an hour and a half from me that has Ceftaz. And I'm like, I have a prescription from another vet. Will you take that so I can avoid the exam fee? Cause it's like another hundred dollars or whatever, just for the exam fee. They're like, no, we need to see the animal. I'm like, ah. Oh. Okay, fine. So I make the appointment, drive an hour and a half, and I go to this vet and they see, they, they're an exotic specialist. The I was going to an exotic vet up north of me, 45 minutes north at vet number one. Now I drive an hour and a half south to vet number two. They specialize in exotics. I literally tell her, I just need Ceftaz. She weighs Yoda, seeing how heavy she is so they know how much to dose. Pull me some syringes, great, totally good. She says, you know, keep it frozen. They send it to me with an ice pack. Great. Every other day, I still have her dry docked and I'm giving her the Ceftaz and vet number two actually has much smaller syringes. So they go in a lot easier, which is nice. But of course, I'm still in giving an injection to a turtle. Every time I poke this, you know, puncture the skin, she's like, you know, pissed off about it. Opens her mouth trying to bite me. About a week and a half after giving her these injections, she stops trying to bite me and is just you know, winces a little bit, which breaks my freaking heart. But it's either, it's either the short term pain and you live or I can just not do injections, but then she will eventually succumb to whatever this was. So a week and a half of me giving her these injections, note that she's in this dry dock, you know, plastic tub with the heat lamp and the towels in my room. And every morning at 5 a.m., shh, 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 I hear her trying to dig, you know, like, like bury herself or dig further, but it's a plastic container, so she can't. And then the scratching slowly starts to go away over the course of about four days. So we're almost two weeks in, the scratching stops. She's near the end of her round of Ceftaz. The scratching stops, she is just sitting like that. Like her arms are out, just like that. Her face is out, nothing. Uh, I soak her in water. She's practically dead at this point. And only when I soak her in water does she start to slowly come around and whatnot. I pick her up though, and she's like limp. And I hold her arm in my finger. She's not even fighting back a little bit. I go ahead and give her her final injection. She doesn't even wince a little bit. Zero reaction to being punctured. That's bad. I said, okay, this is doing nothing. So whatever the heck she has, it's resistant to Batril and it's resistant to the Ceftaz, which is, I end up talking to the vet because I had to take her back. But basically the vet said at a later point in time, because her and I talked for like a half hour about it because I know what I'm talking about and you know, so does she. She said there's a 98 to 99% success rate with either Batril or Ceftaz. Both of them combined 98 to 99% of all infections in turtles are treated with one of those two. If one doesn't work, you do the other. So the fact that her little whatchamacallit was resistant to 
both, there was a one to 2% chance of that happening. And of course, happens to me. So she is not reacting to this injection. At this point, it's like sad or it's a Friday, something like that. They said, hey, we're closed on, on Saturday or we're all booked up on Saturday. We're closed Sunday. Earliest we can get her in is Monday. Two full days after no reaction to an injection. She said, otherwise you can bring her in tomorrow as an emergency. It is a $450 down payment like deposit. And if we don't spend all that money, then we, we give it back to you. Plus however much it is to take care of her plus however much it would be to keep her over the next couple days. So my options are drop 500 bucks roughly or pray that she makes it two days to save you know, four or $500. Not worth it. I don't want her to die. Someone has trusted me with her from a woman who raised her since she was a hatchling and was moving, couldn't take care of her anymore and sold her to me. I wasn't, uh, once the animal's in, in my possession, it, you are my you are my baby. I take care of you as if it was any of the other animals. So I bring her in the next day. I said, put me down for an emergency visit. Be ready tomorrow morning. I'm gonna bring her in. The next day I drive an hour and a half down. I bring her in and they take her in as the emergency visit. So the vet calls me after a little while they said, hey, we uh, hooked her up to like an IV type deal. We're giving her a lot of fluids, electrolytes. We're giving her dextrose because she hasn't eaten in three weeks at this point. Something crazy. Like they can take that, but it's not ideal. For some reason, she was still defecating. That's really weird if she hadn't eaten in forever. So something really strange going on. So the vet said, you know, she's starting to perk up a little bit. This was the next day that they gave me a call. She said, you know, we're giving her saline solution. We're giving her electrolytes and some dextrose and whatnot and she's starting to slowly perk up. She said, we have, we're doing blood work. Uh, I have the full blood work sheet written up, but I think she said her, I forget exactly what it was, but basically it was indicative of kidney issues. Uh, something with her kidney, something wrong going on. The infection was in there. She said, normally I would take a culture or stick a syringe and pull out a little bit in order to get a tissue sample. But first off, she said she's too weak. She said, I tried taking blood work. This was the first day. She said, I tried taking blood work today. Her blood blood pressure is like zero. Like she's like dead. They pumped her with that fluid, that uh, electrolytes, whatever, dextrose sugar to get things going. Waited 24 hours. So I brought her in on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, they took the blood test and, and checked on what was going on and, and did the, the blood culture because they wanted to give her time to get to produce more blood, for her body to produce more blood. Her body had like very, very low blood pressure. Like it was insane. So it's indicative of some type of infection in her kidney, something weird. She said, we can't take a sample, unfortunately. We're gonna try the very final round of antibiotics that I know of. She said, otherwise, if this doesn't work, put her down and we'll necropsy to see if it's something that the other turtles could get and figure out exactly what it is so we know how to fight it. So she gives her amicacin. She said that there's a very high chance or a good chance of nephrotoxy, which is basically, I think, nephrotoxicity is rapid deterioration in kidney function due to medications and chemicals. Basically, she's already got an infection in the kidneys and we're now using a type of antibiotic that is very harsh on the kidneys. That's not, that's not great. So she she said, I'm gonna prescribe you this amicacin. We're gonna try it. She said on Tuesday, if she's still looking better and she's still perking up, we'll send her home with the amicacin. You have to give her the shot in one arm. And then we're also gonna send you home with a fluid bag, this giant fluid bag that has this yellow, this little like yellow dot. It's a self-sealing uh, like bag basically where you take the needle. It was so cool. Okay, so I have all of my little syringes that have that are pre-filled with the medication, shoot it into one arm, and then I have to take the plunger, the syringe, uh, out of a sterile plastic container, pop it out, take a needle that's also in a sterile container, twist it on, then take the bag of the bag of fluid, puncture into that yellow spot and then pull out five milliliters of the fluid. Once I have my two syringes, give her the shot of the antibiotic, and then the other arm on the opposite side and alternate every day, like switch it up and whatnot. And then I give her, oh my God, it's five milliliters of fluid. And I go really slowly because I could tell she's like, ooh, ooh, it's like you're getting injected with a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of fluid, a lot to avoid that nephrotoxicity, to flush out the kidneys, make sure that she gets all of, of the medication and it's not too harsh. Woo! That's your final injection. So I do that every other day for three weeks. Thankfully, the amicacin didn't need to be frozen in the freezer like the Ceft has, but that amicacin stuff after three weeks 
finally, I think it was a week and a half, she starts perking up more. The eyes are clear. She was closing her eyes before. Her eyes are totally clear. I'm able to put her in a little bit of water. I throw her some shrimp. She ate the shrimp. Three weeks later, she's, she's getting more of an attitude when I pick her up to give her the injection. She's opening her mouth, trying to bite me. I feel the strength in her arms when she's pushing against my hand. And now we can see, sure enough, uh, I, I filled up the water level to a, a decent amount, not just a super thin amount before. No longer needed to dry dock her. She's eating normally, eating pellets and everything, acting like a normal turtle should, trying to escape her enclosure and whatnot, and totally back to normal. Just the emergency visit was a thousand and like two dollars or something crazy like that. And that's not counting the Seftaz and not counting the Batril. Oh, so that was, that was fun. So thank you for all the people who support me on Patreon and whatnot. And for you guys for watching these videos because all of the revenue from the ads from these videos, which is not a lot because thanks YouTube uh, and the Patreon. Thank God for the people over there. I put all of that that I've been accumulating into the vet visit and thankfully I am not going bankrupt yet, but it's, it's just, it was insane. I just wanted to make this to explain what the heck was going on with Yoda and I didn't want to make the video during the process because it's not fun to keep you guys up to date and then have a sad ending and be like, yeah guys, we really, really tried and now she died. Anyway guys, that uh, that is my story time. That is the story about how I dropped Oh, that's making me dizzy. Over a thousand dollars at the vet for this turtle. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not too mad about it. It's more experience. It really does give me a lot of good experience. And as we can see, Yoda is now doing very well. I just fed her yesterday. She was munch crunching away. Totally good. I will likely put her in an enclosure in the greenhouse with Pancake and Urkel, the other at-risk animals, I will say. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll probably end up doing that maybe sometime next week. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'm gonna go take a NyQuil and pass out for the next four hours, and I'll see y'all in the next one.